Hello, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. I really hope you're having a great day. If you are, that is so wonderful. But anyway, today's video is some last minute holiday DIY gifts for pretty much whoever. You could do this for a friend, your parents, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your significant other, whoever you still need to get a gift for. And all of these things you can pretty much do with stuff around your house, so it's pretty inexpensive. Okay, let's get started. So the first gift is a graphic bucket hat and this basically is a great gift for anyone in your life who really likes fashion, who, who really likes sort of keeping up with the trends and really likes thrifted stuff and just, I don't know, that sort of aesthetic. I'm probably over explaining this, but whatever. And for this you don't necessarily have to use a bucket hat. You can pretty much use any sort of clothing material that you can write and draw on. Literally the only two supplies for this are the bucket hat or other piece of clothing and fabric markers, but you could also use sharp. This is so open-ended you can pretty much draw or write on whatever you want and I've seen this sort of chaotic almost graffiti like style all over Pinterest. This is a great gift idea I think because you can totally personalize it based on the person you're giving it to. Say it's for your best friend and their favorite artist is Ariana Grande or Billie Eilish or I don't know who else and you could totally cover the hat in Ariana Grande lyrics and doodles that are reminiscent of her style and so with that for this bucket hat I covered it in Taylor Swift lyrics specifically. Taylor Swift bridges because those are iconic. Also, I tried to draw on some random doodles, but I'm really not that great at doodling when you can't erase it, so sorry, ignore my bad drawings. Also, I didn't film the whole process of me drawing on the hat because it took quite a while. Then the next gift is the painted mirror. I really, really like this one. This gift is perfect for someone in your life who really likes makeup or who really likes decor type things or who really just likes taking mirror selfies or anyone who really likes TikTok trends. <laughs> so the materials for this one are obviously a mirror. This one I got for a couple of dollars off of Amazon. I assume you could get one at Target, Walmart, the dollar store, literally anywhere pretty much that sells mirror type items. You also need some acrylic paint and a paint paint palette for my palette. I just used a piece of paper. But the first thing I did was use an alcohol swab to clean off the mirror before I painted it because it was kind of like, I don't know, it just wasn't totally smooth and I wanted to smooth it out. But I decided to just paint some clouds onto the top and the bottom of the mirror because I think clouds look super simple but still cute. And also I kind of know how to paint clouds and don't really know how to paint other things. <laughs> so I decided to just mix a light blue color to use as an accent in the white clouds. I don't really have a strategy for this. Basically, just swirl the brush in a cloud-like shape and keep the accent color around the edges of the cloud. And the next gift is the Memory Travel Adventure Book. So this one pretty much is the most universal, I think, out of all of the gifts. And for this one, you can either print out pictures of you and the person you're getting the gift for, or things that the person likes, or a trip that you and the other person have been on, or stuff you want to do with the person in the future. For this one, which is basically a scrapbook journal, you basically need, well, it totally depends on what you're filling the book or journal with. Anyway, what I personally used was a sketchbook, scissors, a glue stick, scrapbook paper, stickers, and pictures of Paris that I printed out from Pinterest. Side note to print out these pictures, I just dragged pictures I liked from Pinterest onto my desktop and dragged the pictures from the desktop into a Google drawing, which is a file type on Google Drive, and then printed them out. You could get pictures developed at like the camera store or Walgreens, or you could cut pictures out from a magazine. It really just totally depends on what you're going for your scrapbook. Then I just kind of winged it and put together the pictures in a way that I thought best matched the mood elicited in the pictures and this is just such a fun gift to give a friend or a relative to commemorate a fun memory or a future experience. It's almost more fun too if you don't like plan out each page of the scrapbook in advance and just kind of, I don't know, be spontaneous and let your creative juices fly. <laughs> The next two gifts involve sewing. The sewing isn't too difficult, but it also is probably will take less time if you have a sewing machine. It's not complicated sewing at all. It's regular sewing, the very basic sewing. This gift is the denim pouch. So this gift is perfect for anyone who needs to literally carry anything. It could serve as a makeup bag. It could serve as a pencil case. It could serve as, I don't know, a, uh, I don't know what else you put in bag. 
bags, but it's very functional, very cute, and you can just make it using pieces of scrap fabrics or remnant fabrics that you just have around the house. So the materials you need for this DIY are denim scraps or like really any fabric scraps. I use these cut up shorts from an older DIY. You also need scissors and a ruler or a straight edge. I also grabbed a pen for marking and a needle and thread. You'll probably need to be doing a lot of needle threading during this. And you also need a button. I just used this one that I found on my bookshelf that I have no idea what clothing item it was from, but I wasn't using it, so I used it for this DIY. But anyway, the first step is to grab your fabric and measure out a rectangle. The size of the rectangle depends on how big you want the bag to be and or how much fabric you have. My rectangle was around six inches, but to be honest, I didn't really measure it out super accurately. Once the rectangle is cut out, you'll want to fold it in half so the rectangle has a double layer of fabric and the other half doesn't. Make sure the part of the fabric that you want on the outside of the bag is under the fold because you'll be turning it inside out. Then basically you're going to stitch the two sides of the fold together where my finger is highlighting. When both sides are stitched, turn the pouch inside out and you can see that it's kind of starting to look like a bag. You can also add a hem where my finger is pointing, but I didn't add a hem because the fabric was already hem. Now you're going to want to cut the fabric that isn't part of the pouch into either a triangle or a trapezoid. This was almost like an envelope in a way, and I just cut out two triangles from the corners without really measuring. <laughs> Once that's done, now it's time to add the hemline. Just fold over the edges of the triangle or trapezoid and stitch it together using any stitch. I don't really know that much about sewing, so I just kind of winged it and it turned out looking like this. Then it's time to add the button, place the button in the spot that you'd like on top of the pouch part, and then stitch the button on. I didn't really know how to do this, so I looked it up on WikiHow, but basically the easiest way is just to stitch through the button holds and fabric over and over and over again until the button feels secure. That's not a great explanation, but I'll link down below the WikiHow article I used. <laughs> Finally, you're going to want to add the slip for the button, so fold over the trapezoid and draw a line where the button makes an indentation then cut through the line and loop the button through and there you go. You can also add different patches on the back or on the front. So this gift is the scrunchie with a little bow tail at the end of it and it's perfect for anyone in your life who just likes scrunchies or likes tying their hair back. So the supplies for this one include about a yard or a bit less of fabric, scissors, a needle and thread, elastic and pins, which I didn't have so I just used extra sewing needles. The first thing you're going to do is cut a long piece of fabric. The width depends on how thick you want the scrunchies to be and the length depends on how scrunched together you want the scrunchie to be. My width is probably around 5 to 6 inches and the length is probably around two and a half feet. If I were to do it again, I'd probably make it about a foot longer. <laughs> Once it's cut out, fold the fabric in half so the part you want on the outside of the scrunchie is on the inside. Then pin together the fabric so it stays held together. Then what you're going to do is just sew the fabric together along the opening where my finger is pointing. It's so much faster if you have a sewing machine, but I just hand stitched it. Once the fabric is sewn together, cut a piece of elastic that's around two thirds the length of the fabric. Set the elastic aside and and turn the fabric inside out so now the better side of the fabric is on the outside. Then run the elastic through the fabric and knot it together. And then stitch the two pieces of fabric together so it forms a circle and set the scrunchie aside. Then now you have to make the tail. You're literally going to repeat the exact same steps as you did with the scrunchie part, but instead of sewing the two ends of the fabric together, you sew them separately and individually. Also, you don't put any elastic in the fabric. And then once the tail is made, then you just tie it around the scrunchie into a nice double knot. <laughs> So that was it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed these gift ideas. Let me know if you decide to make any of them. I personally think they really work, but I may be kind of biased, but whatever. <laughs> and yeah, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below anything you 
want to subscribe to my channel turn that notification bell on follow me on Instagram and I will see you next time bye